What's up guys, Tim Austin with Drag Boss Garage. Guess who I'm with? Bob Hutman. So we have another video, and I wanna tell you, I wanna dedicate this video to Blaine Johnson, RIP, and Bruce Sizemore. You yeah. knew both of them. Yeah, absolutely. Bruce yeah. died yeah. at the end of December. So keep his family in your prayers. Yeah, and, and Blaine Johnson, um, his brother was the one that built our billet, billet cylinder heads for us and uh, just a super, super guy. So uh, um, yeah, we'd like to dedicate to their memory. So we're gonna tell you about this. This is the Ford 4.9 six cylinder race head. And it's hard for me to read, I don't got my glasses, but it says M6049-149. You know, all Ford cylinders had to start with M6049 or 6090, they're earlier. But I'll show you a picture of it. This is from 1999 Ford Motorsport Catalog. I'd showed you this before, and I'll put a little video, uh, picture of it so you can kind of get better detail on it. But we're gonna tell you the story of how this head came to be. Now, if you saw the other videos with Bob, we talked about this cylinder block right here and how special this is. Now, they had an issue with keeping head gaskets on this. Once they started to get the compression past 13 to one, that's when they started having issues with compression. So I'll let Bob tell the story. So listen to this. We used to build the, these cross flow uh, V8 heads. Um, uh, we, we cut six individual combustion chambers out of three Ford race heads and then Healy arc them back together. And then we'd have to deck them so much that we'd get the deck on the head too thin. And when we started raising the compression, uh, we actually got up to 16.2 of these things. Um, uh, we kept having head gasket problems. So we had a friend of ours who was an alcohol racer from Pennsylvania, a guy named Mike Kosky. He was using the Alan Johnson stuff for his alcohol dragster. And he saw us with the head off it and he said, why don't we take this head over and show it to Alan and see if he can build you a billet one. So that's what we did. We just took the head over to him and he looked at it for a second. He goes, yeah, I can do that. He says, we'll digitize it and we'll make one for you. So he made us two prototype ones. And uh, it took him about four months to do it, which was great. He also made the, the uh, rock arm stand for it. And, and uh, so it was, it, it was just a gorgeous piece. He worked with T&D on a rock arm system for it. And it, was, it all just fit like a glove. And uh, the first time we put one on a block, it looked like I grew up on it. So we were really, really happy with it. But um, anyhow, we, um, when we went, the funny story about this was when we went to, uh, to get the heads, we were going out to Pomona. And uh, the cost on two prototype heads was eighteen thousand dollars in cash, and so um, so we we fly out to Pomona, and um, a friend of ours, uh, Mike Craig, went with me, and, and uh, Mike was carrying nine thousand dollars, and I was carrying nine thousand dollars, and uh, we actually hid the money in the hotel room because we just knew somebody was going to steal us or rob us from it, you know. Yeah. But uh, we took it to the track next day, and and. Uh, and I had this big wad of money, and Alan says, how much do you have here? And I said, $18,000. He said, okay. And he didn't even count it. He just took it and threw it in the top of his toolbox. And I thought to myself, what was I worried about? You know, I said, if he's not worried about it, what the heck was I so worried about? What did he say, then I, see you later or something? Yeah, well, he was, you know, he's, Racing. Alan was, this was at the at the Pomona race, and he was working on this top. So that's what, Winter Nationals? So, yeah. Winter Nationals, yeah. yeah. So he, um, so he, um, he didn't have time to talk, but and he didn't have time, had, didn't have time to count money. He just trusted us, and uh, and that's how that's how his head came about. And then they made ten of them, and uh, and we ended up sell, selling all of them for to different people that had them. Uh, Mike and they had had them. Bobby Andrews had them. Uh, Ralph Holt, just a whole bunch of guys. So uh, those, those are still out there somewhere, you know. And our stuff is all in Texas, in Florida with Glenn Treadwell. So. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it really is. The innovations that you did, Bob, can you, yeah. are you getting this or not? No, I mean, just... this darn cylinder block, that's a monster, can go up to 4185. Yeah. Okay, a cross flow aluminum 4.9 cylinder head. No, it yeah. yeah. One well, man. I mean, it was just, no, no, it was not just me. There was a, there was a ton of people. Uh, uh, so many people that helped us. First, first our sponsors, uh, you know, Varsity Ford and, 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 Ford, and yeah. Watson Racing, and uh, you know, built all the Cobra Jets, and and people like Chris Razor, and and uh, uh, just so many people that have helped us over the years. And and uh, uh, Lou, Lou Stanford at Varsity um, was 
No, he owned Varsity? He owns Varsity. He has family. He now, has how family. do you know that? How did you meet him? Or how do you know I him? went to high school with him. Yeah. With Stanford? Yeah, with Lou Stanford. And, uh, what? We went really? To, went to parochial school together. And uh, Getting your fingers beat up with rulers? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, you've been there. <laughs> no, but I've heard the stories. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, um, yeah, Lou was, uh, Lou was always wonderful. And, and uh, when he found out we had this car, I was buying cars from him all the time. He found out we had this tractor with the 306 of it. And uh, he wanted to get involved in it. So uh, next thing you know, we were putting varsity for it inside. Bob Andrews um, drove our dragster in 1998 to the World Championship in, uh, in comp. And, um, and so uh, we were, we, you know, we won the race and the first person we called was Lou. And, and Lou said, oh, he said, this must be a good call. He says, or you wouldn't be calling. He said, yeah. I said, we just won the championship. So he talked to Bob and we just had a, it was just a crazy time. Yeah, it was a great time. I love hearing these old stories, you know. I mean, we've been talking now. I don't know what time you did you. He came from Michigan here. Where do you live in Michigan? Dearborn. Dearborn. Yep. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and learning about that 4.9 motorsport race head. <laughs> the thing that I wondered about, because you said that they made 10. Mm -hmm. But when I looked in the catalog, I got Alan Johnson's number right there. Right. I could... I. I I could order these, but you're telling me there's only ten. How did all that work? Well, what happened was, what happened was, he, he contracted. We contracted for ten. Yep. And then when he went, when when people started asking for more of them, he said, he says, I'm not going to do this on a one-off basis. He says, I will make twenty-five of these things, but I want to be paid for them up front. And and uh, and nobody wanted to, you know, invest that kind of money. At okay. Time. And one guy wasn't going to buy twenty-five heads and then sell them. You know, so it, it never happened. Yeah, but he's, he's still got the technology today. But when the, yeah. if you, in the back of the day though, when you called him, if he had those heads, they would sell them to you. Absolutely. That, and that, was, that was a requirement from NHRA. They had to be generally available. Yep. Um, uh, and, and which meant that the manufacturer would build one for you. And uh, it had to be, uh, had to have a Ford part number on it. And, uh, and so we got the race group to do that for us. And uh, that's what that I nine is. They had inline, inline I'm I six. Six, yeah. yeah. So that's what the, that's the, that's what that stands for. Inline six. Okay. The I six. There was I think there were three or four criteria. criteria. It was three or four items, and um, and uh, and that and then they they wouldn't get they wouldn't legalize it until we we met all those and we did. Okay. We did them all. We jumped through hoops and, and got it done. And they, to their credit, approved it. Wow. Yeah. yeah so. Hey, yeah. it's not what you know, it's who you know. That's for sure. That's for sure. And we know somebody for sure. Yeah, we do. Yeah, that's for sure. So, guys, thanks again. Bob, tell them thanks for being here with me. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this today. Thanks. And uh, I, I, I wish Steve had been with us today. And, uh, and we're, if we're going to do something in the future, we're going to have him involved in it. So we that, will. That would be great. Yeah. I'd love to have Steve get on here with us. Steve Ambrose he's yeah. talking about. Yeah. So guys, like I always say, you're always seeing and learning something new at Drag Boss Garage. So stay tuned, because you never know what's going to be on next. That's true. Thumbs up, Robert.